Since 1947, ownership of land in the Middle East has led to conflict between Israel and Palestine. Following World War II, the redistribution of land led to conflicts over control of the Holy Land, Jerusalem. Palestinians claimed that they had settled and claimed the land long before the Israelites fled in exile. The Oslo Accord was the first attempt for a compromise that would have established barriers between Israel and Palestinian countries. However, this compromise proved unsuccessful as riots erupted and soon escalated to the Al-Aqsa Intifada, the second Palestinian uprising against Israel. Israelites were afraid of losing their holy land. Conflicts arose when Hamas committed terrorist attacks. Ever since the attacks by Hamas, the two countries have never been able to come together to form a new compromise, as they are both hesitant. Today, both sides are now trying to make a new compromise that is fair to both sides, similar to the Oslo Accord. At the end of World War I, the British defeated the Turkish. In the peace talks, parts of the Ottoman Empire was given to the French, while the British got the rest, including Palestine. Before the Arab-Israeli War of 1947 to 1948, Israel, Gaza, and the West Bank were all once known as Palestine. Due to the sympathy of the British towards the Jewish, they let them immigrate into Palestine. The next thing the British knew is that they've been caught in an impossible situation and both sides have understandable viewpoints. The Jewish Israelis, whose ancestors started moving to the region in the 1800s, say their claim to the land depends on a guarantee from God, and furthermore, for the requirement for a place of refuge from boundless antagonistic feelings towards the Jewish individuals, known as anti-Semitism. The Palestinian Middle Easterners say that they are the rightful inhabitants of the land because their ancestors have lived there for hundreds of years. The British decided to withdraw from Palestine in 1948 and gave the problem to the United Nations, which later established UNSCO, United Nations Special Committee for Palestine. The United Nations had come to a conclusion that the only viable solution to the conflict was the separation of the two communities. Because of this, they drew up a partition plan. The Palestinians rejected this because they argued that it was inherently biased and ignored the legitimacy of Palestinian rights. Nubar Hafsabian, professor and chairman of political science at Chapman University, explains how the UN sparked this conflict. The, the UN helped create the, the, the problem, uh, helped create the problem without seeking the opinions of the indigenous population, the Palestinians. Okay? It, came up with a plan in which one third of the population, that is the Jewish population, was given about two thirds of the historic land of Palestine, and two thirds of the population was given about one third of the land. That's the initial uh, uh, problem. Instead of the partition giving peace in Palestine, it sparked the 1948 Arab-Israeli War. This six day war killed over 776 Israelis and over 4,517 were wounded. There were over 9,800 Palestinian killed, wounded, or missing in action. Israel's recognition as a state led to the conflict and problems which escalated to the wars and terrorist attacks that have killed thousands of Arabs and Jews, damaging hundreds of structures and putting over 500,000 people in emergency shelters. This land is a holy land for both Israel and Palestine, which is why the two nations have been at war ever since. Arnon Degani, PhD candidate at UCLA, states how religion has played a certain role in this conflict. As those uh, politics failed both sides, then the religious leaders, those that are using more and more um, religious discourse, uh, those have risen and, and became more popular and, and, um, and their politics became more determinate in how the, this conflict is shaping out. As this conflict has gotten much more important to the people of the world, this conflict has become extremely hard to solve. This is because of the different nations and different people's perspectives on this conflict. Mark Levine, PhD professor of modern history at the History School of Humanities at UC Irvine, states the dynamic between the two people. Well, it's not necessarily complicated per se. It's quite simple. There's a small piece of land, there are two people living on that land, 
Each side wants the land more or less for themselves, and one side is far stronger than the other side, but not quite strong enough to just get rid of them. And that's basically where we are. Over the years, there have been many compromises. Unfortunately, none of them have worked successfully. Both sides want peace for their people. Some compromises have worked for a little while, while others have made tensions between Israel and Palestine worse. The Oslo Accord was a compromise that first brought the two leaders of these sides to openly recognize the argument of the Holy Land, Jerusalem. This compromise was overseen by U.S. President Bill Clinton, who acted as a middleman between the two states. According to the Oslo Accords, small sections of Israel were to be granted to Palestine under their full control. Other pieces of land would have joint ruling between the two countries. This would be the only part of Israel that would be granted to the Palestinians. The picture here shows what Jerusalem looked like after the Oslo Accord. Area A is the part of Jerusalem fully under Palestinian control. Area B is the area with Palestinian administration with Israeli protection. And Area C is a part of Jerusalem fully under Israeli control. To say that, you know, Palestinians were given everything or they were given... So for them, already, this kind of compromise, which was on the table, is giving up 78% of what they see as their homeland. I'm not saying it is their homeland. I'm not saying they deserve it. I'm not saying it's theirs. I'm not saying it's not theirs. I'm saying... From their point of view, signing a deal like that is signing off 78% of their homeland. Palestinians and Israelites argued against this accord. Some Israelites lost their homes because they lived in the area that would be granted to Palestine. Riots erupted along the streets of both countries and terrorist groups formed. Hamas is a Palestinian terror group that formed because of this accord. They went after innocent Israelites on the streets. Innocent Palestinians were killed for voicing their opinions. This was known as al aqsa Intifada, the second Palestinian uprising against Israel. There was havoc on the streets and Israelites and Palestinians were furious. They thought that after over 68 years, a compromise would have been made, but it seemed like nothing could temper the anger between the two countries. Since the Oslo Accord was signed, the conflict concerning Jerusalem and the West Bank is becoming more and more intense. The violence has increased in the area, and the desperation for a compromise is also increasing. Before the Oslo Accords had been passed in 1990, there were a total of 2 million refugees surrounding Israel. In 2010, there was a total of 4 million refugees. This is a massive increase of over 2 million refugees. This was because the Oslo Accord did not focus on both sides' needs. The Oslo Accord helped the Palestinians mainly by giving them most of Israel's holy land. And the Palestinians were supposed to ensure safety and peace, but the Palestinians did not stop attacking. Because Palestine did not follow the rules that were set by the Oslo Accord, the Oslo Accord ultimately fell apart, making it a failed compromise. This left both Israelis and Palestinians fighting for their lives. Dr. William O'Mara, Chapman University's lecturer in the Department of History, explains what went wrong with the Oslo Accord. It did not recognize a state, it did not recognize their right to a state, and it set up no actual process to create a state. All it did was shifted responsibility for policing Palestinians to Palestinians. Right? But nothing actually changed. No actual sovereignty could have resulted from it. Due in part by the failures of the Oslo Accord, for over 68 years, the Israel-Palestine conflict has rapidly grown to become more and more bloody and complicated. This war has split families and endangered loved ones all along the Gaza Strip. Fueled by the media, as well as many interferences by political leaders, the complexity of this conflict has risen to a state where none can find a sensible compromise. If you were to work out some arrangement where they shared the land in some way, everyone could live where they wanted to live and it wouldn't matter anymore.